I got to tell you, one of my favorite cars in the midsize class, between thirty and forty thousand dollars, since its introduction in two thousand and four, has been the Acura TSX. It provides wonderful content. It comes well equipped. It's a great handling car, and it's thrifty on fuel. Most people don't know that the Acura TSX is actually the Honda Accord sold in Japan and Europe. It's smaller than the Accord that we have here. This is the new TSX for 2009. It still comes with a wonderful assortment of equipment. It's bigger than the previous model, but it's cheaper. Check this out: in 2004, a TSX cost around $35,000. This new car starts under $33. Styling of the original was a bit conservative, but it served the car well. It hasn't aged badly. For 2009, this TSX sports a similar shield grill that we saw for the first time on the MDX SUV. The fenders are more pronounced, and there are more chrome pieces around the windows and on the door handles. The rear styling is closest to the original. There's no mistaking that this is a TSX. The TSX looks better in person than it does in pictures. A funny phenomenon. One of the problems with the original is it felt a bit squished in the back seat, but the longer dimensions and wheelbase have particularly helped with the legroom. The TSX is wider than the 2008, and the wide, relatively flat upper dash really accentuates this. The center console looks very similar to the Accord that we had on the show earlier in the season. And I have to admit, I wasn't a big fan of it back then, and I'm still not a big fan of it now. Zach? Well, you know what? It's just kind of ugly. That's really the thing: is it doesn't look very good. And there's a lot of buttons here, and it's a bit confusing. And that's one of the things I liked about the original TSX. It was the simplicity of design. It was a no fuss, no muss car. Very easy to use. Now check this out: this dash has like lizard meets pig skin on here. And on the doors, kind of funky looking. Do you like it? You know, Zach, I don't really like it all that much either. I have to be honest; it just doesn't look like it goes with the car. But keep in mind, it's not just how the TSX looks; it's how well it's equipped that really makes it a winner. The front power seats are heated and cloth covered only on the base model. The leather wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes with radio controls. The TSX is Bluetooth enabled for hands-free phone calls, and the stereo has an auxiliary audio jack. There are only two extra trim levels to add on: the premium package with leather seats, updated stereo, including a USB controller, and a few other touches. The technology package adds the sat nav system with the backup camera, along with a further updated stereo. The premium version starts at just over thirty-six thousand, and the technology version costs thirty-nine. So the TSX continues its long history of providing the buyer a lot of interior content, but it's not just that; it's how it drives that sets it apart. The Acura TSX is unique in the midsize entry-level luxury market because it's only powered by a four-cylinder engine. There's no V6 offered. You know, in years past, it could have been criticized as a bit of an oversight, but in this era of record-high gasoline and oil prices, this car is a great option, and I mean a great option. The drivetrain is relatively unchanged from the outgoing model, with the same 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder with 201 horsepower delivers buttery smooth and free revving power. The same five-speed automatic with paddle shifters behind the wheel is also held over from the last car, but when placed in sport mode, it creates a very lively driving experience. If you're an enthusiast driver like me, the six-speed manual is as good as it gets. The TSX is quick with the manual. It makes this bigger TSX feel so connected to the driver. The engine, when in the meaty part of the rev range, pulls oh so smoothly, all the way to the red line with absolute abandon. Honda makes some of the best four-cylinder engines in the world, and this one is a gem. I remember driving the original TSX very clearly in my mind. It stands out because I remember walking away from that car, going, "I absolutely love it. It appeals to me, the kind of driver that I am. It's spirited. It's performance oriented. It has great handling. A wonderful engine that delivers a lot of fun, especially when you get the manual. It really corners well. It gives lots of feedback to the driver, but it's also comfortable at the same time. And the price is fabulous. This car you do not ride in. This is a car that you drive. It really is a drive. Driver's car.
With a longer wheelbase, wider track, and some added structural reinforcements, the TSX has a very firm ride. It's not harsh at all, and the driver really feels connected to the road. Now, the larger dimensions might be a little bit hard for some people to get used to, especially if you're getting out of one of the older models. Zach mentioned the wonderful engine, but we should temper all of this enthusiasm with a word of caution. If you do a lot of highway driving, the four-cylinder engine can be a bit noisy at higher revs, especially when passing. The great thing about having a four-cylinder is the thriftiness of the engine. Equipped with an automatic, the TSX gets 9.6 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, or 29 miles per gallon, and on the highway, 6.5 litres per 100k, or an amazing 43 miles per gallon. I really love the engine in this car. It's got just enough power, it's peppy, and it's so smooth. I had a lot of fun driving the manual transmission, but I live in the city, and I think for day-to-day -day driving, my choice would probably be the automatic transmission. Well, Zach, we know that the TSX has been one of your favorite cars for, well, a long time. So the big question is, what do you think of the 2009 compared to last year's model? Well, you know what? They're both excellent cars. They're just slightly different. But what I like about the previous model carries over into this car, and it all centers around the drive. First of all, the four-cylinder engine is a standout. It's powerful, yet it's efficient. And you don't feel like you're wanting for more. Sometimes when you get the four-cylinder, you go, oh, I wish I had a bigger engine. Not with this car. When you match that to both of the wonderful transmissions, the paddle shifters on the automatic, and the manual is oh so sweet, you can really get a lot of performance out of this car. It handles beautifully, yet it's still comfortable and relaxed enough for daily use. And the bigger size makes it a more useful car for families. The back seat previously was a little bit squished. On the downside for me, it's just the slight styling thing. The outside is still a bit conservative and the inside, I don't like that big knob in the center. It was the same complaint we had about the regular Accord, but you know what? It wouldn't stop me from getting the car. What about you? Well, you know what, Zach? I actually really like the exterior styling. The seats are very comfortable. There's lots of space for your passengers as well as a lot of space for cargo in that trunk area. And I agree, I really like the engine as well, especially with the rising cost of fuel. I think that that four-cylinder engine, it's so peppy and fun to drive, it'll be saving people some money at the pumps too. And on the downside, I agree with you, Zach. I really don't care for the look or the layout of the center console and the dash. Do you think with this new starting price, there's even better value in this car? Absolutely. You're getting great value for the price of this vehicle. It's interesting, though. The previous model, as we mentioned, is around $35,000, but it came standard with leather seats. This one's thirty-three. dollars But if you want the leather seats, guess what price it gets you back up to? $35,000. Right around the same price. It's a little sneaky thing, but still wonderful value. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.